Hey guys, and welcome to another free plugin Friday. Today, we are looking at the full bucket music Mono Fury, which if you can look at what it looks like, you can tell it is a Korg Mono Poly style plugin. Uh, so great for those sounds of the Mono Poly. And if you don't know the Mono Mono Poly is, it was an analog synth um, by Korg that is uh, quite expensive and kind of legendary in a way. And this kind of aims for that kind of sound. So uh, you can hear there, I had four different uh, instances of Mono Fury and added a little bit of reverb and can get some really cool sounds. So today we're going to go through the plugin. I'm going to play some sounds, go through some of the features. Um, so stick around for that. So basically you can see the layout is pretty easy. Um, you've got basically your output section over here and then uh, arpeggiator here. Um, so it kind of it's kind of laid out like a lot of analog synths are. Um, where your VCOs are kind of all in one section and then you've got your kind of envelopes at the end. And this is very similar to the OBX plugin. Um, you might have seen that uh, video I did on the OBXD. Uh, fairly similar layout to that. So this is kind of all your master stuff. You've got your modulation. You've got uh, what the mod wheels do and stuff. You've got output here, which is off low and high. Uh, you've got your frequencies for um, your modulation. You've got uh, your frequencies for your pulse width modulation. Um, and then here you have your VCOs. So this has got four VCOs and then a fairly basic um, filter section. You've got cutoff resonance. You've got your envelope and keyboard track like most plugins, and then you've got your um, filter envelope and your VCA envelope. So very standard, few, few cool features, but yeah, very standard kind of subtracting synth to use, but having four um, VCO is what makes it really cool. Um, so it's basically a four voice analog style synth. So I've got it on the init patch, which I think is all the VCO set on a saw wave. <laughs> So I've got an initialize, um, which is basically all your VCOs. Uh, and your key assign here decides what you do with it. Do you want it in as a mono synth? Do you want it as a unison mono synth? Do you want it as a poly synth? Um, so you've got a few different options here. Now it's your traditional polyphonic synth, which means each oscillator is the voice. They don't copy like a modern synth. So what you basically have is only four voices at once. Um, you can use them all at once with the unison. You can use them on separate keys. You can set them differently, and then each key you press would sound different, uh, which means you can get some actually slightly more interesting things, but yeah. Okay, so basically you've got your four VCOs here. Um, so let's go through VCO one first. Uh, I'll put it on a, a mono mode, um, and then we'll go through all the VCOs. And um, basically the way this synth works is because it's paraphonic, in order for the polyphony, each VCO uses uh, is a different note. So it just assigns a note to that VCO. Now, if you go on unison, it assigns all the notes. If you go on U share, it unison is based on how many notes you play. So if you play one note, it plays four. If you play four notes, it plays one each. Um, but the filter and the uh, volume envelopes aren't, um, which makes it more paraphonic. So it kind of means that you can't just go play heaps of chords and they all work perfectly. It does have that vintage paraphonic kind of uh, way it works. So for, for beginners, it might seem like the sounds are a bit weird and I might get some weird sounds that don't really work while I'm programming it. Um, so just it's something to watch out for. So let's just start with the first VCO. Um, so basically, 
I'm just going to play that. Uh, we're going to put the VCF. This. So we've got triangle. Basic triangle, you've got your saw wave. You've got a pulse width modulation, which is controlled here. And you've got waveform and your frequency here. Um, and then you've got pulse switch, which is your static pulse switch, and you've got a width for that. You basically get the idea. It's your kind of standard waveforms. And you've got that repeated. You've just got tune for each of these. So I'm going to turn up all the VCOs now because it allows us to actually do poly and unison and stuff because the problem is uh, it will go change different VCO if I hit two notes together. And uh, what then happens is you won't hear the note. So let's set it all to uh, saw wave and let's go look at the VCF and the envelopes associated with them. So it's cool. Uh, we'll put the tune all at 12 o'clock too. I don't know why VCF2 is so uh, weird sounding. <laughs> it's actually, um, I think we have to look here, frequency mod. No. So if we play chord. So it's playing an A and then you've got the VCF. Let's have a look at it. So with that resonance, it's kind of very smooth, fairly fat sounding. Add some resonance in. Has that very 70s, 80s analog kind of synth sound. Even more resonance, and it does start to self resonate so it can get a bit harsh, but in the coolest way possible. And basically self resonate there. So mind your ears. That's where you get all your R2-D2 sounds. There's a little bit of stepping, but it's not actually too bad. So let's turn that resonance back down and you can kind of do your typical bass thing with the envelope while we look at the envelope. So turn the envelope up, um, set it like about here. A bit more decay maybe. And then, of course, got your keyboard tracks, so or it tracks your keyboard. Uh, so your basic normal synth functions. So let's just have a look at the VCA envelope a bit. Actually, we'll just do some of the attack. The attack actually isn't very long in this um, VCF. So you can't do that big fade in pads. You can do more of the kind of fat kind of wubby baseline stuff. Very vintage kind of funk sound. Now you can see that it doesn't re-trigger the VCF if I've got a note held down, which is why it's paraphonic. So say I go A, and then play something here. So yeah, it doesn't re-trigger the um, VCF when you're playing uh, normally, um, when you've got kind of legato going on. So that is part of that paraphonic kind of thing. 
Uh, so let's have a look at the VCA. So I'm going to just uh, put the cutoff back up. So you can get some pads with the kind of VCA a bit. The release kind of holds on. And you can get some more little um, kind of short things. And if you want to use some pulse width maybe um, and kind of can get a bit of a tune going if you choose different octaves. But if we put on U share, that's where it can get cool. Get some really weird chip tune stuff uh, just because it keeps randomly switching. Well, not, it's not random, but it sounds random. But say we put them all to the same octave and then use U share. So basically, I play one note. All of the VCOs play two notes, play three notes, play four notes. And you can hear it's re-triggering the other note. And we switch to trigger mode. While that's hold down, it won't re-trigger at all. So the v VCA stays the same. Now, this doesn't matter if your sustain's on full. Because the envelope actually isn't doing anything. But if your envelope is doing something and you've got it on a single trigger, when you hit new notes, it won't re-trigger there. Whereas multiple will re-trigger everything, but it means the notes you're playing will start to re-trigger. I hope that's making sense to you. Um, it's a pretty late at night here, so I'm a bit struggling with uh, trying to explain how the paraphonic and re-triggering works. But basically, to sum it up, the envelopes, there's only one. So it, however you set it up, either in multi-trigger or single trigger, it can only do one thing. It either responds to the new notes you're playing or it doesn't respond. It can't respond differently to different notes that are all playing at the same time because there's only one of each envelope. So hopefully that makes sense in not being clear. I'll kind of uh, put some links to what paraphonic synthesis for those that uh, have never really come across it before and those that do know this synth will kind of know what I'm talking about. So... I quickly just wanted to have a look at the unison modes in mono um, and the arpeggiator and then we'll go through some different sounds uh, that are already built in because that's kind of the most important thing is the sounds. Now I could explain for every synth plugin I do, I could explain how every single function works but not all of you really want to listen to that. So we'll get to sounds you might really want to hear. Um, but first let's go into unison. So basically unison, unison is monophonic for the... Um, VCOs all the time and then you basically play them all together. So this is where you can get some cool blending things. So if we go back to saw wave because I love saw waves, um, what we can do is basically say the first two, we'll keep them at uh, this octave here and we'll tune this one a bit sharp. Uh, let's uh, bring that sustain back up. So that's kind of the top layer, and then we want to add a octave down. And then we want to add a, another octave down. Now we can use this detune control to detune everything. That gives it a bit more analog feel. And then you can use Portamento.
So let's add some VCF in there. And then there's some built-in effects, which you click here um, and you can kind of, there's actually all these other options too that have opened up, uh, such as XMOD and Velocity. Now, I won't go too deep into them, but there's things like you can uh, reset to unison, you can do round robin, um, it does the tempo and stuff, but I just wanted to show you that as well. But basically, yeah, we turn the effects on. Add some reverb. Not that long of a reverb. And then you got chord mode. which you can also use with hold. So hold basically holds the note you're playing. Transpose it as well. And use some cross mod. Okay, that's enough of me messing around. You kind of get the idea. There's a few more features. There's a really good manual full bucket. I'm really good with their manuals uh, for a free plugin. Most free plugins don't come with manuals. So um, let's just listen to some sounds. So you can open them here. I can open them in Cubase. I will open them here because no matter what door you are, this section will be here and just play some sounds. So Rezo Bass is the first one. It's pretty cool. <laughs> Now you could use the arpeggiator if you want this kind of sound. Put on latch. Two octaves. Okay, let's move on. Uh, Horn of Sync. So most of the cool um, sounds are really at the beginning. We won't go through all of them, but I want to go through some of the ones at the beginning. Should have explained really the chord mode uh, allows you to play chords, obviously, but yeah, this is using the chord mode. I'm like I said, look at the manual, I'm not probably as well versed as you can. If you do want me to have a look really, really deep into the um, kind of features, I can do a really, really in depth programming for Mono Fury. Um, just let me know.
So 80 is pretty much brass section thing. Square bells. Let's go up an octave. which is cool for those kind of inches sounds. Sync bass. Uh, zipper drums. Kind of, kind of tom sounds. Snare. Very, very synthy sounding. Oh, what's this one? Hi hat ish. Pretty much a noise hi hat. Crazy VCOs. So if I play one note, kind of does that cool thing. Sweet sign in time. So that's using that resonance. Uh, sorry if it hurts your ears. It's just the plug, uh, just the preset. Basically lasers, forged notes. Uh, polyglides. Spooky. Pretty special effects. This is a pretty cool um, bat kind of sound. Another wind special effect. Now, like I said, we won't go through all the programs, so I want to kind of skip ahead to some just cool sounding ones. So those are the first 15. Here you've got your kind of traditional sounds. They sound nothing like the instruments they're meant to, but you know, they, they do a thing. I mean, what coda does that sound like? I don't know. Uh, whistle. Uh, you got a Western style bell. Whatever that's meant to be, and then a normal bill. Kind of a cowbell, but synthy. It doesn't really sound like percussion, like I said, but it's kind of cool. My playing's atrocious tonight, sorry about that. Let's just move to the end of the chain just because there's a couple of chord ones and we'll leave it there. And then you've got the major version. And 
the rest is kind of special effects, I think. A couple of leads. Bit of stepping in the pitch um, wheel as well. And a cool art. It could be an intro to your new Synthwave band because it totally doesn't already sound like the intro to a song already by a band. And when you want to make video game effects. 80s video game effects. Okay, so that was the Mono Fury. Sorry if it was a bit of a messy little look at it. Um, not super familiar with the plugin, but I wanted to show you because it's free and it's based on a very, very famous synth. I think it sounds pretty, pretty good, especially for free. Now, you won't want to use it for everything. It has a particular sound. There is some stepping in the controls, so it's not 100% analog, but for free, what do you expect? Um, so check it out if you want. I'll leave the link below. Uh, free plugin Friday is every single Friday. So yeah, check it out. Subscribe if you haven't subscribed. That way you can see when more free plugins. If you have any suggestions for free plugins you want me to have a look at or you think might be alright, I'll have a look too. So thanks for watching and I'll catch you next time.